Hey, did you know that you can send invoices directly from your Airtable to QuickBooks without ever leaving your Airtable base? My name is Andrew Dodds, and I am a co-founder at SimpleStack here. And today, we're going to help you reclaim your time by learning how to do just that. So stick around, and let's jump into it. Uh, jumping in the Airtable base here, pretty simple setup, three tables, customers, invoices and invoice line items. We've got some linked fields between these tables. So if you don't know what linked records are, feel free to look at my linked record tutorials that are in the channel. It's pretty easy to learn. They are just a relationship between two tables. So we've got our customers here on our customer table and our customers can have one or many invoices and we can tag the invoices that exist in the invoice table. This is where the general information of the invoice lives with the customer, a readable customer name. We'll talk about this in a moment. Um, line items, which it links out to in the invoice line items table and something called a rollup field, which calculates the values of the items that are tagged here. And then the invoice line items are exactly what the line items are gonna look like in the invoice itself. Um, we've got a couple here with quantity, the unit cost, and the total as a formula. And you'll see that it's also tagged to an invoice here, okay? So that is the basic setup. Your setup may, as, as you try to do this for your business, may be different, but it's gonna have these same sort of fundamental requirements in order to properly send a quick books invoice. Now, we're going to be using Zapier as the glue between Airtable and QuickBooks for us today. And so we're going to jump in here and get started with that. So if I click this orange create button, this allows me to create a new Zap. And when you're creating a new Zap, they are structured in an if then format. It's essentially a formula. It's a trigger and an action. So when a trigger happens, what do you want the resulting steps to be taken? You can do this across 5,000 different apps that Zapier offers in the uh, marketplace that they have. And so there's a pretty good chance if you're using it for your business, it already exists and you can connect it to your Airtable or any of the other tools you're using. For us, we're gonna use one that actually isn't a tool at all, but it is a built-in service offering that Zapier has, and it's called a webhook. A webhook is really just a URL like you would visit in your web browser, like your Chrome, but it allows us to send data to it, and it listens for the data that we send over. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it things about our invoice. And that specific thing we're gonna tell it is the record ID. Okay, so for setting up the webhook, quite simple. That's going to be our trigger. It's going to be a catch hook. We don't need to do anything there. And it's going to generate this URL for us. So we're going to go ahead and copy that and jump back over to Airtable. And on our invoice table, we are going to create a formula field. We're going to name this webhook. And we're going to go ahead and use a concatenation formula. So this allows us to put information into the URL. And we're going to put some quotes in there and put our URL within the quotes. Following that forward slash, we're gonna give it a question mark, rec ID equals. This is called a parameter. We're basically saying that we're gonna give it the record ID and it equals something and uh, a comma to put text together here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in the record ID. Now, the record ID, although you can't see it uh, just sort of on the surface of everything, exists for every single r record you create in Airtable. It is a randomly generated uh, set of numbers and, and letters that Airtable assigns to a record when you create it. And you can access it by using that rec ID with the parentheses in a formula field. So this works pretty great. And most of the time I would recommend doing it directly in the formula. There is however an advantage in this use case to having a field that just gives us our record ID. And so we're gonna point to that. 
okay? So this is the other way that you could do it. You could say I have a record ID field, and that's a formula that just has the record ID function in it, the call, if you will, that has the string, okay? So in our actual webhook, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, um, because it's gonna still work the way you originally put it together, but you would point to the record ID. Okay, so that's two different ways to set it up. Now, the way that a webhook wor works is when you click on it, it launches a window. It get, This doesn't really mean much, okay? It's just a bunch of uh, computer language and information uh, status of success. You don't have to worry about this. Good, just go ahead and exit out. You can't break it or uh, mess anything up. And then over here, since we've clicked on that, that means that it's been triggered and sent to the URL. So we can tell the URL, hey, test, see what you've been sent. And you'll see that it sent the record ID that we had created in that URL in our Airtable. So this is a pretty good start. I've made one mistake, which is I haven't named my zap yet. Really good practice to get in is to name it as soon as you start working in it. Um, so that you don't get confused when you come back later. This is going to be called send invoices to QuickBooks. All right. So now we have our test record with some data here. And uh, what we're going to do, our first action step is going to be an Airtable action step. And uh, there's a great step that's called find record. And what this will do is allow us to just connect our Airtable account here. The action is going to be uh, off of the base invoicing prototype. Off of the table, it's going to be the invoice table. And what we want to do is we want to search by that record ID field. So that's why we have a field just with the record ID in it. And what we want to give it to search for is the record ID we sent. Now, you may be thinking, couldn't we have just sent all of the invoice information in the webhook originally? The answer is we could have. There'd be quite a URL to create and a formula. And so sending the minimum information that, that you need that you can then use a more robust sort of call is, is typically how you'll want to structure your system. Really is a point of preference, though. So we're now going to tell it, hey, search for this record ID in the invoices table that we just sent you. And you'll see that in doing that, it pulls across all of the fields that are on that invoice table. So we have the invoice total cost. We have the invoice name. You'll notice that the line items, these two line items, they show up like this. And they correspond to these tags, line item one and two. They are showing the record ID because they are a linked record. And the customer linked record is doing the same, which is why we have a formula that just tells us the customer name. By the way, a formula like that is really easy to set up. All you do is type in the field that you want to be able to look at. Now, the reason why we need a field with the customer's name is that's how we're going to search for the, the customer. So we have found our invoice record in Airtable, and now it's time for us to find the customer in QuickBooks. Now, the, it, it could be that they don't exist yet in QuickBooks, and so I'm going to show you how to handle that here now. QuickBooks Online, we're going to drop it in, and we are going to find customer. Now, finding a customer, we can choose to uh, connect our account. There we go. And our search field is going to be the name. And our search value is going to be that readable customer field that I have from earlier. So I'm going to throw that in there and click test step. So this will find the customer. There's one thing that you'll also want to do just to make sure that um, everything is set up correctly is if they do not yet exist, you're going to want to create them in QuickBooks. And so it's going to ask you, well, what should their name be? And we're going to use just that same formula field. So doing double duty here for us. And essentially, if it searches for Will Smith and doesn't find him, 
then it's going to create him in the system. Okay. We're going to go ahead and test that step again, make sure everything's looking good. And it is okay. So our very next step here is going to be to find uh, multiple records with Airtable. And it's kind of tricky, um, but we can find many records with line item support. And the way that it works is if we have a single value that we're searching for, that multiple records share, we can grab multiple records as line items. And so for us, the advantage is we can just drop those directly into the invoice creator and create line items without having to parse through them, loop through them, go through all sorts of crazy sort of gymnastics. Um, and it just so happens that, uh, that we have something we can do that with, okay? So setting this step up, we're gonna choose the base and the table. This time it's gonna be the invoice line items. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is jump back into the air table here to the invoice line items area. And what's the information that multiple of these hold in common? Well, it is the invoice number here, right? And so um, what we can actually do is look up that record ID that we had created earlier, okay? And uh, just a word of caution, when you look this up, you actually don't want to do it as a, as a lookup field because uh, a lookup stores it in a weird way that Zapier can't understand, and you need to store it as text so that it can read it. So you're going to use a different field that's called a, a, a roll-up field, okay? And this is just going to be invoice record ID roll up. Okay, we're gonna look at the invoice field and we're gonna just look at its record ID and then we're gonna do this thing, array unique values. Okay, and you'll see that we're looking up now the invoices ID. So this is the field we're gonna search by and what it'll do is it'll pull any of the line items associated to this invoice. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have our search by field is gonna be that new one we just created. So we're gonna refresh our results here and we have the invoice record ID, awesome. The search value, now remember, we already know what the invoice is from, from finding it before. That was from step two, so we're gonna grab the ID for that invoice. Okay. And that's all we've got to do. So you'll see now when we test this step, we're going to get two items. So here's our first item and all of the details. And here's our second item and all of its details. Okay. So we're now almost there. It's time to put the cherry on top, which is to create the actual invoice. And this is where all of the previous steps that we're gonna reference come back together. Um, so we've got QuickBooks here, okay. Let's go ahead and choose our event. It's gonna be to create an invoice. All right. Now it says it has line item support, which gives you a clue that you can sort of dump comma separated fields into the, the fields that they're offering. I'll show you in a minute. It kind of feels weird, but the system recognizes that it's got to sort of parse them out, okay? So uh, the first thing is we've got to select our customer. Now it's important here not just to go find the name of the customer because then every invoice you ever create will be for that customer. You want to custom, and I think a better word than custom is dynamic, meaning it just depends on the previous steps. And so for us, we're going to find the ID of that customer that we found in step three. Okay, so that's now in place, ID 58. Now you can do all sorts of things here. At a minimum, I would tell it to auto generate the invoice number. Now you can do all sorts of things with the terms and the dates and all of that, but the most important things for us to cover here are actually the uh, service. 
So you can decide, now this is another thing where, where you could tag a service and um, pull that over from, from the invoice itself. That's definitely a choice. Um, or you could say whenever we do this, for instance, it's just gonna go on our general services bucket. It's pre-created for you in QuickBooks Online. Feel free to, to experiment with what makes the most sense. Um, and services within QuickBooks have a code, so you, you could always reference the, the code in your automation. Next, we're gonna tag the description. So remember, that's gonna be from the records we found. And when you find line items, you'll notice it pulls them all into comma-separated string. So we've got line item two, line item one, we've got their record IDs, we've got all sorts of uh, other information here, okay? So for the description, we're gonna drop that in. Uh, let's also drop our quantity in. Um, and it's a little unintuitive at first, but it's okay because it knows to separate everything out based on the commas. The rate is the field cost per unit, and then the amount is our calculation. Uh, let's see, where's our amount? Total, okay? So those are kind of the bare minimum fields that you're gonna need in order to generate an invoice, okay? And uh, we'll just test the step. And if it gives us the green light, we're gonna turn this thing on and publish it. And it did, so I'm gonna publish this and now we're gonna create an invoice to, together and send it into QuickBooks and then take a look, okay? All right, uh, so let's create a brand new invoice. This is gonna be uh, invoice two. Right, this is gonna be for customer, say Helen Mirren, line item. We're gonna do uh, line item three, and let's create another line item really quick. Uh, we're gonna do line item four, quantity two, cost per unit 500. Okay, so we're expecting uh, an invoice for Helen of about $2,000 across these line item three and line item four. So we'll go ahead and send that into the system by clicking our URL. And let's hop over to the sandbox environment here. And we're gonna filter our invoices to today. And there's Helen Mirren for $2,000 due in 30 days. Invoice 1048, let's go ahead and open it up and see what came through. And there we have it, two services line items. There you go. Different descriptions, amounts, it's all good. And you'll see that that maps to our details on three and four. Okay. So uh, I hope you've in, enjoyed this tutorial on how to send invoices directly to QuickBooks. I'm gonna do another tutorial on updating the information if it changes once it's in QuickBooks back in your error table. But hopefully this gives you an idea of what's possible and the automation you can have in your business. And hopefully the time you can reclaim because that's the most exciting part about this, right? Um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. It really keeps us going here on the tutorials at SimpleStack. And I'm going to see you in the next tutorial.